Hello, and welcome back to the Funky Penthouse. The tune that you can hear in the background right now is a speed garage tune that I put together recently. And unlike the last step-by-step video, this time the tune itself is finished. So if you'd like to listen to that in full before you watch the rest of this video, then you can follow the link on the screen now, or you can click through to the description and it's linked in there as well. What I'm going to talk about in this video is more kind of the sounds involved in making a tune like this rather than the composition and the arrangement because um, this style of music, speed garage, uh, drum and bass I suppose as well, they're kind of forms of music that uh, rely heavily on uh, the production uh, and the sounds that you use in them. This tune is very simple compositionally so I'll talk about the sounds more than anything else. So, uh, with that in mind, let's get started. So, on this tune, I started with the drums, and I'll just play uh, the introduction to the song so that you know what they sound like. Right, okay, so you uh, you get the idea there. And um, so the drums for this tune are all coming from the uh, Akai S900, apart from one of the cymbals, but I'll get onto that later on. So uh, I'll just go through the sounds here. Kick. Clap. And uh, hi-hats. They are all sampled straight out of the... Um, TR-909. Now, you might be wondering, well, he's got a 909 there. Why is he sampling it before he makes this tune? And there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. Partly is um, in an attempt to replicate the sounds of these original kind of tunes. Because more often than not, people making UK Garage, Speed Garage, that kind of stuff, they didn't have their own 909 but they did have lots of records with open 909 drums at the start or at the end and their own sampler, like an S900. So most of them would have been sampling drums from records. I've skipped the sampling from the record step and sampled straight from the drum machine so I can get exactly the sound that I want straight away. But the result is a similar kind of sound. Now, another reason why you might want to sample an S, uh, a TR-909, rather, is that um, there's certain things you can do with samples that you can't do with the real thing. With uh, the 909 here, for example, I've pitched up the hi-hats, which you can't do on the original machine, so I think this is the original pitch. Um, and I've pitched them up for this tune. And also... Something that's, it really is quite subtle, um, but it makes quite a big difference to the overall sound, is um, truncating down some of the longer sustained sounds, such as open hi-hats. Um, so if we listen to this hi-hat, you can hear that the tail of it's cut off straight away. And um, that, again, is trying to replicate the sounds of those... Um, old tunes where they would have been sampling a drum beat where there's perhaps a kick straight after the open hi-hat so they have to trim off the end of it and you result in a sound like that so um, as well as the 909 samples the snares for this tune I've sampled from records and I think I've got three different snares those two are the same just pitched differently and that's just for ease of sequencing and then I've got one more snare up here. Uh, and again, that's multi-pitch just for ease of little sequencing tricks that I do later on. So um, that's that. I'll just play it through for you again. Right, just quickly before I move on to talking about the other samples used in this tune... There's um, one important part of the drums that I've not mentioned yet, uh, and that is the uh, the swing. And uh, what I've done here is uh, I've made a little demonstration so that you can hear just how drastically different drums sound with and without the swing. So um, 
Everything here is sequenced in the uh, Akai ASQ10, as I do with all of my tunes. This tune, I think, altogether comes to 60 kilobytes. And uh, we got it all on there. And the one in there for backup, always protect. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll just play you the loop quickly again. So that's that, that's the loop there. And now I'll just toggle through. And here it is, I've copied the exact same um, uh, track, the exact same drum rhythm, but I've taken all of the swing off, so this is entirely straight, and I'll play it again for you now. And back to the old one. So you can hear there, there's quite a big impact on the sound. And um, I think the swing setting for that was 62%, 63 perhaps. I'm, I'm not certain exactly. But um, yeah, if, if you've not got the swing, if you've not been checking your swing settings and you're trying to make stuff like this, then have a look at that because it makes a big difference to the sound. Okay, moving on. So that covers the drums and all of them are in the uh, Akai S900. We've also got some extra sounds in the S900, uh, in the Oberheim DPX1, which is basically just an expansion module for the S900 for when you use up your voices, really. Uh, it can do other stuff, but that's mainly what it's for. And the Roland SP808, which is right up the top here, which you can't really see in the shots, but again, it's just being used as a module, all being triggered from the Akai. So I'll just go through the other sounds in uh, the... S900 and in the DPX they've got the same sound set but they're just used differently. So we got the drums. Then we got the first of our vocal samples. You can hear there's a little click on that, they're a little bit dirty uh, and the reason for that is that this sample isn't actually a sample off a record or off a video or anything like that. It's a sample from my friend uh, at a ferret race and he was quite excited while the ferret race was happening because uh, he stood to win two quid so that's the sounds that he makes when he's uh, when he's excited uh, and he hasn't seen this video yet and he doesn't know that I've used them and he's probably not going to be too happy when he finds out but uh, sod him right uh, so and also we've got backspin you know this backspin and uh, this sample here. They're both, you know, straight from uh, Artful Dodger and Craig David, basically. They're not sampled from it, but it's the same idea, just using kind of al almost cliched sounds, but actually, I think when you listen to them in the tune, they actually sound all right. So that's them, and they're sampled from. Um, from uh, I think they're sampled from the uh, just videos on YouTube, which uh, it's just sound effect samples and that. Then we've got the nuclear explosion. And shattering glass. <laughs> so the, that one is just at the start of the breakdown. You might not even be able to notice it. But um, it's just a big kind of boomy sound to give you some more impact when that uh, happens. Then we've got the cymbals. Backwards and a forward cymbal. Um, and they distort a few presses too hard, but that's just the way that the effects are set up. So I always make sure that I'm not pressing them too hard. Um, and then we've got uh, an extra vocal sample here in the S900. And again, that's just from a little acapella pitched up. Then we're back onto the drums. So now I'll just switch over to the SP-808. Right, so now we're on the SP-808. What have we got here? There, we've got the first of our time stretch vocals, and um, the uh, eagle eyed amongst you will have noticed that I'm using an S900, which doesn't have time stretch, 
So what I've used for that is I've used a program called a Kaiser, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, and I'll explain how I've time stretched all of the vocals. Uh, also, we've got. the pad um, and that is made using the sequential circuit six track and again I'll explain how I've made that in a minute so there you go you got both pitches of it as well the same chord an octave apart and throughout the whole tune I'm only using the same chord uh, just octave up octave down so it's a one chord song uh, so we've got them. Then I've got kind of little bleepy sounds. Um, they're just made from, I got a sample of one bleep, and then just in the computer I've applied loads and loads of reverbs, delays, um, to make them sound like this. And that one's achieved by altering the um, speed of an LFO while it's playing. Uh, the, the speed of the um, modulation on a delay, rather. So there you go, you got them. And then here we go, gratuitous time stretch here. Totally needless. That's not used in the song. That is. Um... And again, it just it just changes the sound of it. Uh, and again, that's just from a hip hop a cappella. Just some bleeps. They're just taken from a sci-fi film. Another time stretch vocal. That's from a documentary. Quite an interesting one on um, pirate radio. It's. The documentary, if you watch it, you'll see it's the inspiration for people just do nothing. Um, but it's quite a good documentary. I think it's called um, Tower Block Dreams or something like that. Search for it and you'll find it, Pirate Radio Documentary. Then we've got a cleaner crash sim uh, sample. And you'll notice the delay is already applied to it. And that's just because I've only got so many effects units here. But I've got a lot of sample time in the SP808 to use. And then what have we got? And again, another time stretch vocal from the same documentary as this. And then finally, we've just got one more little time stretch vocal bit. And again, I've already applied the delay to that because it's a it's a big pain to try and sequence sweeping um, velocity changes in the uh, ASQ-10. So that's all done in there. And then just, um, they're spare, they're not being used in the tune. So, there we go. That, that's all of the samples using the whole tune. There's actually quite a few, I suppose. Um, but really nothing that complex. And it's just kind of a case of you start the tune and you're listening to it and you think, what can I put on there? You think, you think yeah, I'll, I'll put that over the top of the, uh, the introduction and then I'll put this on it. That kind of thing. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just build it up like that. Okay, so this is the program that I used to time stretch all of the vocals that I've used in this tune. It's called um, a Kaiser, and you can download it for free. There's a link in the description to this video. Uh, and it's a really simple program. All it does is emulates the time stretch algorithms from Akai S series samplers from the S950 onwards. Um, so I'll just demonstrate how it sounds. What we've got here is one of the samples that is used in the tune, and I'll, I'll play that just as it sounds as standard. Insider. And that's sampled from uh, a YouTube video. Insider. So uh, you can hear that, and then we can adjust the time factor to uh, stretch it out. So we'll put it up to uh, 375. I, I can't remember exactly what I used in the actual tune, but you'll be able to hear what it sounds like anyway. You can also um, adjust the cycle length, which just changes the kind of um, the timbre of the stretch. Uh, you can you can stretch it really long if you want. 
you get the idea with that and uh, this program also lets you uh, transpose as well which is um, what I did for the little stuttering hip hop acapella sample I just transposed it I didn't adjust the uh, length of it so here we go you can transpose down as well so it's a it's a really cool program if you obviously if you've got a nice old um, s950 or something like that you could use that instead of this but for me this works fine it sounds almost identical um, and it's a, it's a good little program so I'd recommend having a little go with that if you feel like it Right, so now we'll move on to the synths, and uh, I'll start with uh, probably the most important synth sound in the song, and that is um, the bass. So I'll just play a little clip again. So you can hear that there, and... Um, what I've used for the bass in this tune, like I do in quite a lot of my tunes, to be fair, is the um, Moog, Moog, rather, Slim Fatty. Um, and um, you can hear the patch there in isolation. It's actually quite simple. And really, uh, all the only trick to this patch is... A slow attack on the filter sweep, almost gated um, uh, amplitude uh, envelope or VCA, um, and just try and then just dial in kind of a squeaky, not really squeaky, kind of a bit of a squelchy, kind of almost lightly acid type um, sound with the filter. Now, um, one of the other little things that you can use with a, with a patch like this where there's no release on it is you can use the, uh, the duration to kind of provide a little bit of um, kind of drive for the tune. So I, I, I did do it on this, but not, not as much as I've heard on some tunes, but you could do something like this. So long sustain on that one and then go to a shorter sustain. So there you go. That's the um, that's the bass sound. Really simple. Uh, and there's uh, not much more to say about that. So I'll move on to some of the pad sounds in this. So there we have it. That is the the first um, actual bit of synth in the tune that isn't sampled. And um, that pad is the Juno 60 um, with some modulation on it and some delay. I'll just play it on its own for you now. So... Um, that patch, obviously there's two different delays on it and you can hear them pinging away in the background. The patch itself again is quite a simple one. It's really just a long release on it um, uh, and an LFO on the VCF. So if I turn that off you'll hear there's a big difference. Back on there. Quite a nice sound actually, you could probably use it in different uh, styles of music as well, kind of deep house, almost kind of funky house as well if you wanted. Hmm, better than I thought it was actually. Uh, better than I remember. 
Okay, so so that's your first um, sound, and then I'll go on and talk about the JX3P, which is the the other sound that we use in this. So there you hear one of the um, one of the other sounds, one of the other um, pads in the tune, and that is from the JX3P. Uh, I'll just play that for you now. Again, same chord, same chord. If there's a chord in this tune, it's that same chord. Now. If you've got a 3P, you'll know a 3P doesn't sound like that. The 3P in this instance is basically just got um, like a sweeping uh, envelope on it. Uh, it's going down here through the um, Akai MFC 42 filter, and that's what's um, giving you the kind of wow, wow, wow. wow, wow. Uh, then from there, it goes down into the zoom. C, D, I can't remember the name of it. It'll pop up on your screen now. The pedal that I talked about in the last video. It's just I never look at it, so I forget the name. And that is what's providing that kind of glistening overtone over the top. Almost like kind of the, um, is it the D50 Hollywood patch that sounds like that? Anyway. So, so there you go. You get you get the idea with that sound. And again, the patch in here is really quite simple. Um, but that's not all you'll you'll notice. That's not exactly the same as the sound that we hear in the tune. And that's because we've got um, a string, one single string going over the top. And I'll turn around the camera here to reveal the strike fit. Uh, disappointingly, quite dark, but. Um, We'll, uh, we'll persist. Okay, there we go. So I've got that dialed in now. Um, and we'll just hear that sound. That over the top combined with the 3P. Now, um, I'm basically an amateur when it comes to making these kind of pads, these, I don't know, rave pads, drum and bass pads, liquid pads, whatever you want to call them. Um, my, my, Phineas Mikey, shout out to Phineas Mikey. Uh, he's got some good videos up on that. I'll link it in the description. I think that's what he's going by now, Phineas. Um, so that's that. But um, the Strike Fet, that's uh, a cool synth as well. It's... Uh, I really like it. People um, people have been slagging it off from what I see because it's digital. But, I mean, it's small, it's got MIDI, it's cheap, it sounds good. It's got the effects on it, it's got the phaser, it's got the reverb, which also sound good. And um, it's just less of a pain in the ass than a real string synth. Although, obviously, it doesn't sound exactly the same as a real string synth. Uh, or not, not the same as, I don't know... Uh, uh, Logan or, or whatever but it, it still sounds good to my ears I, I think anyway criminally underused in this tune if anything because I'm only using one note but there you go there we have it so that is all of the simp sounds on the tune apart from the six track which I'll talk about now Okay, so now I'll just talk quickly about the um, pad from the introduction to the tune that's got the kind of ping-pongy effect on it, the stereo effect. Now that is made from two different patches in the um, six track that I've recorded into the computer and tied together. Um, so I'll just play the main patch for that now. So 
So there you go. You can, you can hear that, and the the bah, 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 the kind of um, tremolo effect is achieved by the pulse width on the six track. Interestingly, you can set the pulse width so that it's inaudible. So um, so that the the square wave is the pulse width's made so low that it's just a little blip and you can't even hear it. So if you set the LFO deep enough, then you can make it so that uh, it sounds like a tremolo. But actually it's just extreme pulse width modulation. And if we wind down the mod here, then you'll hear what it sounds like without that. I think I've got a program, I think I've got a certain amount programmed in anyway. So that's one of the patches. Uh, and the other patch is this one here, which is a more simple patch. So there you go, you've, you've got those two. And um, recorded into the computer through uh, the electroharmonic small stone. That's why it's got kind of a phasey effect as well. Yeah, both of them are recorded into the computer. Then I took two separate takes of... Is it this one? I can't, I can't find the patch again. I can't remember what it is. Uh, but uh, both of them recorded into the computer. And I did two takes of the... Bah, 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 and then slightly set them apart and pan them so that you've got them going... Bah, 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 and um, that's how that pad is uh, achieved. So really, it's quite simple, but it's, it'd be quite difficult to make that kind of a sound on a synth alone. And again, then it's put into the SP-808, and I'll just play it for you now. Once it's all in there, it sounds like this. So that's almost everything. Right, okay, so that's really all of the sounds themselves, but there is one more thing to talk about, and that is the compression that I've got on this. Now, I'm using uh, an Alesis 3630, which is um, kind of, it's, it's most synonymous with kind of the French house sound, but um, it, it works well for quite a lot of stuff. It's, it's not a transparent compressor, but a lot of the time for dance music, you don't want a transparently compressed sound transparently compressed sound is that yeah that makes sense um so it's it's not a bad little um compressor i'll just play the tune for you now you can hear that's um when well, you can see even that that's really, really quite heavily compressed. It's at about a ratio of six to one. Uh, the attack is about five milliseconds. The release is about 150. Uh, and those are the important stats that you need to know really for that, that kind of sound. And, and all it's doing is it kind of catches the kick and then kind of swooshes it and opens it up again ready for the next kick. And all it means is that you can have a really powerful bass and a really powerful kick and um, they're kind of just mushed together into into one sound. And I'll, I'll play it with that turned off as well, bypassed rather. Uh, here's a point where everybody says, "Oh, it sounds better with the compressor off, actually." But um, it's—I've uh, not got—I've not got the output optimized so that it's at the same level. And I think when it's off, it sounds slightly louder than when it's on. So that'll be what that is. But uh, anyway, so that—that's the compressor, and that's really a key part of the sound. That's um, about everything, really. Although I'll just mention one little thing, which is that um, some people might find this interesting. When I was making this tune, there was a whole other section to it that, in the end, I aborted and I dumped. Um, and I'll play that for you now, and you can just have a listen to that. And that, this was going to go at the start, and then it was going to transition into that section you've just heard there. 
So I, I could never get it to work, but make of it what you will. I might use it in another tune in the future. I'd be interested to hear if other people have similar kind of uh, experiences with dropping whole sections from tunes. So I'll play that now. So there you go, you can hear that, you can probably see it wasn't going to work properly with this tune, but such is life, you know, I thought I might be able to get it to work, might save it for another tune, I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, so you can you can hear the tune underneath this now, the finished version, although I say finished, it's, um, it's while I've been making this video, there's a few bits that I've heard that I've actually wanted to change, little audio levels and little timing tweaks, so uh, I'll probably record a new version and put that up on SoundCloud and um, you'll be able to follow the, uh, the link in the description to that at some point once I get that up, see if you can hear any difference. I think it was uh, Da Vinci who said that art is never finished, only abandoned. Either Da Vinci or George Lucas, one of the two. Anyway, so that brings us to the end. Um, got a few shout outs, I got a shout out to Gwen, aka Vera Lovely on SoundCloud, check her out, she's good. Um, she uh, gave me some tips regarding the uh, open hi-hats and truncating them to make them sound more snippy, more crisp, more staccato. So, um, and, and also on the mixing of them, less hissy, more kind of chunky. So shout out to her, shout out to uh, Anthony David as well for some tips with the drums. Shout out to Martin Bell, as usual. Shout out to Delb. Shout out to Tim Booth for the love. I feel it. Shout out to uh, Symptopia, a special shout out to Symptopia for sharing my last video. They got me more subscribers in one hour than I've had in about the past year, probably. So shout out to them. And yeah, I still want to see other versions of these videos. Nobody else has made one since my last one. I'm still interested to see people's, uh, see people's tunes and see how they work. So cheers for watching. Hope it's been informative. Until the next time. Ciao. 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 Ciao.